Hello everyone, we're gonna talk about Chart.js. Chart.js is a super powerful charting library that you can implement in your own uh, Webflow project. And we have many, many options in here to just embed interactive charts on your site. So stay tuned, it's gonna be fun. That's a sweet. Today, Chart.js, um, I think that most of the people already know this library, or at least they have seen this library somewhere, because Chart.js is one of the most popular open source libraries for charting. There are many others, and don't ask me the names because I, I can't tell, but there are many charting libraries. Chart.js is the most known, I think, in my opinion, um, because it's super easy to use. It has a lot of plugins, it's very extensible, it has a lot, of, uh, a lot of adapters, so it can be used in many environments, not, not only for Waffle projects, as we're going to do today, but also you can use it in your React projects, in your views belt, they have plugins, they have adapters for most, most of the, the environments. So, really powerful. And maybe, perhaps, we could see just a couple samples. Uh, if we are here in the, in the official page, Today we're going to be watching the documentation, so we will follow a little bit the, the guidelines of it. But also there are other things that you can check. And the first one is there are a bunch of samples. So you can, let's see, we can implement bar charts, line charts, area charts. Um, there are many, many different things. So for example, this is a bar chart, a really cool bar chart. And you, it's in, interactive out of the box, so I can just hover, I can see the details of it. Um, you have many ways of formatting the data. You can see how we have different layouts, different ways of representing that data. Cool. We have line charts. Oh, see, with, with animations, see how the chart even animates here when I'm switching. So animations with multiple, you know, uh, there are even options that today I'm not gonna go through because this library is so extensive that I don't even know the amount of <laughs> different things that you can do. Um, today we're gonna go over the basics, L maybe a little bit more um, above the basics, but there's quite a lot of things to cover. You can see that, whoa, this chart is really, really impressive. So many different ways of representing the data, really cool. I'm going to be coding, so if you want to follow along with me, remember that I always use the developer starter template. So this template is the template that we always use for all our internal projects in FinSuite. And you just have to make sure that you have a code editor, make sure that you have Git in your computer, and then you just come here in GitHub and you use this template to create a new repository from it. <clears throat> in my case, I already have my clone, I have it ready here, prepared to just start coding, okay? And also I have a Waffle project. So I'll just close this. And in this Waffle project, I don't have anything. It's just a fresh copy of, cl of client first, but I've deleted the, the entire boilerplate of it. Which, and I just have this container, right? And we'll play it around with it. So let's start. Uh, I'll just go back to the homepage of Chart.js. And I want to um, just go through the Get Started Guide with you because I've read it myself and I think it's super cool. It's very easy to understand and everybody can just follow along with me. Um, once we finish this, I'm sure that you'll be able to implement your own charts by, uh, by yourself. So Chart.js, it's a library. Why Chart.js? They just mentioned that it's very popular. It's uh, performant because it's based on a canvas. Canvas, I don't, um, in case that you don't know it, it just renders differently that HTML elements. The Canvas has its own rendering methods. <clears throat> it has many integrations, um, yeah, and it has a big community, which means that there are a lot of plugins and a lot of uh, ex examples that you can find online. But just let's go here to getting started. And the first step that they ask us to do is to just, let's create a quick chart, okay? And I'm not even gonna use my coding environment for the first for the first example. I'm just gonna follow this um, guide that we have here because it's super simple. 
It's just asking to create a canvas. Okay, we'll do that in a second. And then just import a script on the page and initialize that chart. And it's just plug and play. You just initialize the chart, you put the data, and immediately you already have an interactive, fully accessible chart in your site. So let's just first do this and then we'll jump in the code base. Okay, so first of all, create a chart. We need a div and a canvas inside. Well, the div, it's not necessary, but um, it's very convenient that if we come to our project and we put an embed, an embed is already div. So we're replicating the exact same layout in here. The div would be the embed, and then let's put inside the canvas, I just, uh, sorry, let's put inside the HTML embed, the canvas, okay? Uh, Chart.js requires a canvas for rendering. If we don't have a canvas, we cannot load Chart.js, and that's why we need an HTML embed, because we don't have canvas option in, in Webflow. But that's it. <clears throat> and we'll just take this, and we'll put it on the page. But maybe before, before copying and pasting, let's just try to understand what's this. So we're, we're importing a script, which is Chart.js in this case. And then we are gonna query the canvas. In this case, we have an ID in the canvas that it's my chart. So we'll query the element and we'll call it context. And we'll create a new instance of a chart, which just takes two arguments. The first one is the context, the canvas, where we want to render the, that graph. And the second one is an object with all the options, all the settings that we want to pass to that graph. In this case, we have to decide what type of chart. So it, it'll, it'll be a bar chart. Remember that I showed you a couple of bar examples before. Then we'll pass a bunch of data to that chart. And lately, a bunch of customization options to that chart. Yeah, so let's just, as I said, let's just copy this and paste it on our project. So I'll come here and I'll go to the page settings. And in the body tag, in this case, I'll put this, okay? Script and the chart initialization. And that's it, let's publish it. it says we'll just have to wait, cool. Okay, that's it. We have already a chart. See how easy what that was? I just, the embed, we're passing the data and we're loading that. That's it, okay? The chart, it's pretty basic, let's say out of the box, but we'll see how we can customize this. Um, but see how I'm just hovering and it already shows me tooltips. See how it has a legend. See how it automatically adapts the data, the scales of the chart to fit the entire data, see how it puts the labels for us, see how if I resize the page, the chart is, um, let me just refresh this, if I resize the page, see how the chart it kind of breaks when I go up. That's probably a bug of the library because I didn't do anything aside from copying the example. But yeah, if we just load the page, you can see how the chart is completely responsive, meaning that it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what screen you're using this, the chart is always gonna work perfectly. And then if you wanna adapt it a little bit to look better on a smaller screens, you can also do it. There are options for that. Okay, cool. So we have a basic chart, basic chart, but yeah, let's just move on. Oh, cool. So they already told us that it will look like this. Um, they break it down, but I think that kind of did that for you. So let's just move on because I, I want to do more advanced stuff with you. But obviously here they are, they are showing us like how can you install these in your own project? And as I mentioned, I want to use this in my own local environment. Not only because I want to be coding in VS Code, obviously this is the main reason, but the second, the second reason is because when you're loading this from a CDN, so when you're loading the script from, from a CDN, you're basically loading the entire library, okay? So you, you, it, you're taking the entire Chart.js library, they bundle it together and they put it in, in this script. But when we install it, in it with NPM, we have a little bit of advantage here because we can decide then what to load. 
and it will be very helpful if you are focusing on performance because chart.js library it's not a it's not a small library it could be it could be pretty big um, so it's better if you just pick the things that you need and then bundle them together and that's it so it's it's a good investment to just do it in your environment by installing the 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 package so let's do it i have here as I mentioned, my own fresh copy of a developer starter template. And I'll just install Char.js. The, the example is using NPM, but I'll use PMPM in my case, because it's what we use in, in the template. So I'll say uh, PMPM install Char.js. And this is going to install the packets that we can use. Let's just move on. Uh, integration, they're just explaining the different ways that you can import this. In our case, we're using um, we're using npm in our own code base. So let's just move on. And we have this step by step guide that I think it's going to be cool uh, to just follow along together. But for now, let me just clean up the template, the developer set, uh, started a template because there's a little bit of boilerplate. So I'll just clean up this. I don't want all these example code. I just want this and I'll disable Copilot. Yeah. Cool, I think we're ready. Let's start this step-by-step guide. Um, we have our own project, that's fine. So, because they just mentioned that you, you have to create a new application with a package.json, that's completely fine because we did that when, when uh, cloning the, the template. And then we don't need to write any HTML because we're using Webflow. So Webflow, it's what we use. So we can start writing our own first example in, in the code base. So far, we've just installed Char.js in our, in our uh, code base. So if we check the dependencies, we have Char.js. So let's start importing this. Okay, so I'll just come here and I'll say import chart from uh, Char.js, yeah. Um, Actually, we're going to import it from something they call char.js slash auto. And let me, let, me, let me explain this for a second. Usually when you do import char.js, you can just mm, use name imports like this. And then you can just import the specific things that you need. Like, for example, I need to add the charts, but I also want to put a var... Um, what was it? I think there's a plugin for the layouts and there's a plugin for the bars, there's a plugin for the lines, etc. Because as I mentioned, you want to just pick whatever you need. Okay, but for now, what I'll do is just use uh, the auto export, which is basically the entire bundle of chart.js. So we don't have to worry about having to pick the exact things that we need. We'll just use it without worrying about that. Move on, we have an example here that it's just taking a bunch of data and rendering a chart, okay? Let me just copy this for a second and then I'll, I'll explain a couple things about this. So I'll just come here, we'll wait until Webflow is ready. It's just good practice uh, in, my, in my opinion. But now let's move to Webflow one second and select this chart because um, I don't want to use IDs. I want to use data attributes okay and let's call this data element chart one because we'll we're going to be uh, creating a bunch of charts okay so first one just dash one and maybe we can even i just put a bunch of them already because i'll i'll need them so chart two chart three chart four and chart five and maybe we can just give this some css like charts and we'll put some gap just because when we add all the charts, we just have a little bit of, of space between them. But that's it. So let me publish this. And we will need here, obviously, not to query an element with an ID of acquisitions. I will use my context one, which is going to be the document, document, the query selector. And this is going to be data element equals to chart one in this case. Okay, so we have this and it's a canvas element. Remember that we're using TypeScript. So I want to define the exact elements that I'm working with. 
in this case it's a canvas element okay so we'll put it here and actually this can be this can be no so we'll just mention that we will return in this case and if it's not like this okay cool so we have a bunch of data the data points okay and again same as we did before we have a chart we'll define it as a bar and then i'll go through this in a second but for now let's just see what happens when we put this on the on the page so we have to just set uh run pmpm dev which is the development uh, environment. So this is just spinning up a development um, uh, environment with the script in here that every time that I save, it's just going to be rebuilt. Okay, so I'll just take this script and we'll go to the page settings. And I think that we can get rid of the previous example that we had. And I'll come to the head. And let's define the first source script like this. Okay. I'm only taking this script from my local environment and I'm putting it on the page so we can start testing stuff. But let's just continue where the left off. I set the script. I think everything is ready. We have the embed in place with the canvas and it's polished. So let's just check it out. Cool. Okay. So again, we have our first chart and let's compare the data. Let me just lower this here. Let's put some space. So in this case, we have static data, okay? We have a bunch of off points. We're defining a year and a count. And this is what's being displayed here in the chart. We have a bunch of years and we have the counts, which would be the values of each of these bars, okay? But obviously we have to define this because chart.js doesn't know exactly like, hey, you're passing year and count, but what? how should I be displaying this? And this is how it works here. Um, if you just check this, when we're passing the data, we're passing two things. We're, pass we're passing the labels and we're passing the data sets, okay? The labels would basically match the things, um, the labels on the bottom that we're just displaying. Like, hey, these are the years of it, 20, uh, 2010, 2011, 2012, et cetera, okay? And then in the data sets, we are adding a name to that data set, okay? In this case, it's acquisitions per year. And then we are also passing the same points and check how the points match every, every row in this case. So what we're saying is, okay, let me, actually, let me just remove this and let me just put, let's put one random date label, label one, label two, and label three, okay? Because I think it's gonna be simpler to understand. And then in the data, we'll do the same. We'll just put uh, 10, 20, and 30, okay? If we do this, you can see how we're basically matching each point of the data. So 10 goes with label one, 20 goes with level two, and 30 goes with label three. We're matching those labels with the specific data sets that we have in here, okay? And this is how it's being displayed right now. And obviously, maybe you've, um, you've noticed that um, we have an array for data sets. And the reason is because we can add multiple data sets here. So imagine that this is just points, I don't know, game points. And this is just game two points. I don't know, maybe you've got two games. Come on, like this. And this one is... 15 and this is five and this is 45, okay? See what happens. Um, Charge.js is smart enough to know, okay, we have two data sets with the data that it's matching the labels that you've defined. So he knows how to allocate the, 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 the bars in this case to show them under the corresponding label using the data set. Yeah, it's cool. So, and we'll see in a second that this is apl applicable to all different charts. So not only to VAR, we, uh, for lines, for uh, the pies and all this stuff. So let's just move on. There are a couple more things that I wanna show you with this example, and then we'll move on to another one. The first one, it's obviously here, we're defining type bar, 
right? But if we just delete this and check all the options, see what we got out of the box. We've got bars, we've got bubble, donut, line, pie, polar area, radar, scatter. Let's just see them, how they look. So bubble. Uh, bubble doesn't look correct. Uh, why? Let me just check another one just in case. Uh, it's probably because uh, there are some type of charts that don't support multiple data sets. And probably the, the bubble one that only supports one, one kind of data set, okay? I'll just remove one data set. And actually, let me just go back and, and use the data from the example that we got before. So I'll just use this. And the only thing that we're doing here is saying, okay, put every year of the data as the label and put every count of the data as the, as the data set data, okay? So let me just show you this. We've got the bars chart, but we can move on and use a bubble chart. And if we use this, we've got bubbles. This, cool. If we just try something else, donut, boom, we've got an in interactive donut in here that just um, takes the percentage that belong to each piece of data and puts it here. We got line, the most, I think that's the most common one, right? Just lines. We've got a bunch of points and then the uh, chart.js just connects these points with a line. We've got, what else? Pi. Pi is pretty similar to the donut, but I think the only thing that's missing is the, the hole in the middle. <laughs> but I, I would say that it's the exact same thing. Um, what else? Pi, polar area. Uh, this one goes, I think all of them, they have the same exact percentage, but then the, the radius of, of the pi goes um, bigger based on, on the, the count. Then let's just finish all the different types. Radar, what would that be? Yeah, radar. Always, um, this one always reminds me to the video games, like when you can set stats to, to your characters. And let's see the last one, which would be scatter. And scatter, I think it, it's pretty much like bubble, but um, with, I don't know if it's with bubble of, or with scatter, we'll see it later. Uh, you can define also the size of each bubble. So you could potentially not only put bubbles on, on the page, but also define how big is each bubble based on a specific um, value. But we'll see that in a second. So let's just, for now, let's create a new chart. Uh, so I'll just copy this. This was chart one. Let's just move on to another chart. Let's call this chart two. And I'll just do the same thing. But in this case, I will query the element that it's called chart two. Chart two. Okay. And we'll pass a bunch of data to it. So what can we do? Let's just, as I mentioned, I want to show the stocks, the stocks, the historical. Let's well, just do the same from 1929 from until 2019. Let's just create a function. Let's say get stock prices, okay? And in here, we'll, hmm, we'll create an array of how many this is. This is 90, 90 years. So we'll create an array of 90 spaces and we'll map that and we'll pass. So we need a year and we need a price. So we'll just put a year and a price. But obviously we don't want to pass an entry string. We want to pass a random number method.random. I think uh, yeah, I think that we have to increment this by 90. So we're just taking the math random and we're putting it for no, per 90, but this is giving me a random number between zero and 90. So then I have to sum 1929 to it 
because now it's just going to return me 1929 plus a number that it's between 0 and 90. So if it returns 90, this is going to return 1919, right? And if it ret returns 0, it's going to return 1929, correct. Okay, so I'll just do the same. And let's say the price goes between, I don't know, between 1,000 and 4,000, for example. Just, yeah, why not? Cool. Okay, so we'll just take this and let's just console log this for a second because I, I want to make sure that I'm doing it correctly. Stock prices, this is just going to be get stock prices in here. And let's just console log this stock prices. Uh, okay, we've got here an array with 19 values and it goes from, oh right, this should be, in a, and then this should be rounded, right? Yeah, well, we'll see, we'll see how, how Chart.js handles it. And the price also goes from 1,000 to 4,000, cool, cool. Okay, so let's create a new chart. Let's just say new chart and we're gonna pass the context number two to it and we'll just pass a bunch of options. Let's put it a type of line because we want to have a stock chart. We'll just put a data set, data, and this got to be the data sets, and this is an array. And in here, again, we have to pass the data. So it would be stock prices map, and we'll pass the price of it, right, price. And we'll put a label. So this is gonna be a label, it's gonna be the price, like this. And I think, just give me one second, because I think that if you don't pass, if you just pass the entire object, so if you pass year and price, I think that Charger already does it for you. Give me one second. No. It does not, okay. So let me just go back. And we need a bunch of labels. So let me just put the labels. And the, label, the, the labels are gonna be the stock prices and we'll put the year of it. So the year, like this. Nice, now we're talking. But yeah, definitely, we don't want those, we don't want those decimals. Let me just round, let me round this. So I'll just say math around this and we'll do the same for the price. Yeah, let's, let's also round the price like this. I'm sorry if I'm confusing you guys. The only thing that I'm doing is just uh, mocking a bunch of stock prices and showing it in a line chart. Please let me know if you're following, if you're following, uh, if you're still with me. Um, but I think we're done. Cool. It's a pretty weird uh, line chart. <laughs> Let's hope that the stock the stock market doesn't move like this. But <laughs> we can see how how um, we just have a bunch of data and we're showing it in a, a in a line chart. So that's cool. I want to with this example. I want to show you stuff that we can uh, customize uh, in here. Remember that we have an additional a couple additional things that we can pass to the chart. The first one, it's the options. Let me just move this down. Returns stock prices. And we have this options object and this inside this options object, we can look everything that we can pass. We can pass a lot of stuff. We can pass animations, aspect ratio, background color, Clay, border color, color, data sets, uh, elements, uh, events. We can deal with fonts. We can deal with hover events. We can do a lot of stuff. I would need like a whole month to just talk about all this. But let's see. Um, I have a couple things that I thought that we could do. The first one is okay, we can customize the scales, for example. Okay, so this is one of the options that we can pass to it. So it's, it's called scales. And in here, essentially, we can, we can define how do we want the scales to look inside this chart. So uh, in, in my case, 
right now we're just showing you the value here, right? 4,000, 350, 3,000, et cetera. But I want, to make, I want to display that this is a dollar value, right? Because this is a stock, stock market. So we have an option of passing in here. I think it was, you have to define the, 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 the axis that you wanna use. So it's gonna be Y. And in here, we pass a callback, I think, or labels. No, we don't want the, the labels. We want, oh, we want the labels. We want the ticks, right? And in here, we can pass a callback. Sorry, but there are so many options that I just forget about everything. So inside this callback, um, essentially, we can retrieve uh, context. Let's just, let's just console log this one second. And this is expecting us to return some kind of value. Okay, if I just return for now, hey, essentially we're saying, hey, take all the ticks, a, a tickets, <laughs> hey, a tickets at the point in the axis where we're representing the data. So zero from zero to 4,000, okay? And we have a way of customizing what we're showing there. And if I console log the context, it's the value. Okay, so this would be the value. And the only thing that we have to do is, hey, see, we want to return the value, but I also want to return the something else, right? I'm taking the value, and in this case, I'm appending USD. So I'll just come here and look what happens, 4,000 USD. Or I can just change this and put a dollar sign and now they should be dollar sign. Yeah, correct. So with the prices, now we know that this, this, this value, it's a dollar value, right? So as the same thing as I did here with the, with the Y scale, you can do it with multiple things. We can, you can do it with the, the legend. Oh, look, I didn't know this, but you can activate and deactivate stuff. You can do it with the uh, X axis. You can do it with the, Tooltips. So inside the tooltip, you can also customize the, the stuff that you're showing. So it's really, really customizable, everything. I want to show you how we can animate stuff because there's another option for that. Let me just collapse stuff like this. So animation in we'll pass, um, no, this one, I actually have a cheat sheet. Let me just check it one second because <laughs> I need to remember animations. We can check this actually if we go to documentation, configuration, animations. Remember that everything that I'm telling you today, it's, uh, you can see it in the documentation of Chart.js. So animations, let's just put this animation. Look, it's just taking the values of it uh, uh, it's taking the lines and it's animating the movement in the lines. I don't know, it's quite random, but we can do it. And in this case, it's this option. So I'll just be lazy and copy and paste it. I want to put this option, which is just saying, okay, one animation is called tension. It has a duration of one second. It has an easing of linear and it goes from scale one to scale zero and it loops. So if we save this, let's see what happens. Quite weird, you know, <laughs> but still it's, it's cool, right? Um, we can probably tweak this like from five to zero. <laughs> okay, I was not expecting this, but yeah, it's quite random, but you probably can do better than, than I just did. Uh, <laughs> spaghetti stock. It's definitely a spaghetti stock with these prices. So, okay, but yeah, um, you can animate. Um, you can animate the transition of how the chart uh, enters. You can animate the 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 values between different things. In this case, it's a line. Let's put it a little bit more subtle. Let's put 0.5. <laughs> yeah, now it's just like it's 
it's alive, it, it's, it's breeding. So one thing that I wanted to mention before moving on, it's um, in Chart.js, we have a lot of uh, extensibility. So you already saw there are a bunch of options and I, I just scrapped the surface of it. You, can, you have many different ways of changing the styles, like changing the colors of each data set. Of each data set. You can change the layouts, you can change uh, the fonts, you can change many, many things. And mostly it's, it can be done from these options, options object that we pass in, in it. Um, but another thing that we can do in Chart.js is extend it with plugins. They have an extensive plugin system. Actually, let me just bring up the, the link. I'll send you the links later. But if you look for plugins, plugins, yeah. But I want to see the, the actual plugin list. Wait a second. Because I have the link in here. So they have a full repository uh, that it's called Charge is Awesome. And inside here, you can find many different things. So there's, these are things that you can just feed into Chart.js to extend, extend it. You can feed new kind of charts. So the, the ones that are built in, as I mentioned, it's the line, bar, bubble, download, et cetera. But you can, you can use other type of charts. So let's see a bunch of them. So chart, how's that called? Chart bar funnel. This represents a funnel with bars. Interesting. There's a box and violin plot. I don't even know what's this. Um, error bars, financial charting. We don't have any, an example here. Funnels, look this one. This one is cool. If you're planning to show something about marketing or sales, look, you can show funnels. So these are plugins that you can pass into Chart.js for extending the amount of charts that you can display it. But also there are plugins related to styling, auto colors, it's a, a cool one that basically allows you to automatically add colors to each of the, of the bars of, of a chart. Um, you can add red gradients, you can change styles, provide styling options such as shadow, bevel, glow, cool. Uh, one thing that you have to, to be aware of is look at this list and see how we have a bunch of numbers, two, three, four. This is the Chart.js version. And in our case, we're using version four. So if you check the package.json, Chart.js, we're currently at version four. So if you're planning to add any plugin, just make sure that it's compatible with version four in, in our case, okay, it's the latest one. So we could take a plugin, for example, for annotations, and it would allow us to display annotations in the right in, in, in the chart. <clears throat> so it's it's very powerful. And for install, installing a plugin, I think it's just as simple as installing the NPM package and then importing that uh, using something that um, that's called chart.register register like this and in here you just put the plugin and it automatically charge as it's going to pick it up so you can start passing the options for that plugin right in in the chart instance uh, actually let me get this because the last thing that i wanted to mention before is that remember that i said that for this stream we're just um using the auto Expert of the library, right? But this auto expert, it has the entire Chart.js library bundled together. But for performance reasons, you probably just want to use the things that that um, that you need. And in that case, instead of using the auto folder, you just use the the regular folder, and you use named experts. So you essentially you're just importing the things that you need. Now, if I check this, it's probably not gonna not gonna work because it's missing. Line, it's not a register controller because it's missing the controller for lines. So in this case, I would need line controller, right? And I would put it in here. And I don't know, category, it's not a register scale. Category, category scale. So it's just telling me stuff that it's missing. 
linear, it's not a register scale, okay, linear, scale, I'm just passing the thing that are the things that are missing. Point, it's not a register element, okay, point, point element, like this, line, it's not a register element, okay, come on, line element, uh, but as you can see, what I'm doing is uh, just ticking the things that I need. Cool. Probably the colors, the colors are also missing. So color, colors. Let's see, colors. Yeah. Cool. So now instead of having the entire library bundled together, I'm just bundling the things that I need. So if we check the dist folder, let's let's compare the differences. So right now, if I if I build this, whoops, pmpm PM, build. If I build this, the index.js file, it's gonna be how big is this gonna be? It's 144 kilobytes. Okay, it's quite big, but let's see what happens if instead of doing this. I just, I just import everything. Let me do this and let me build it again. And let's see now how big is it? I'll just take this. Well, it didn't change that much actually. Now I'm surprised. Because now this is it's from 144 to 197, so we're kind of saying if up. You kind of say it save up a little bit, but it's not that much actually. I, I'm I'm surprised. I thought that it would be more. So maybe yeah, if you're planning to to just use a bunch of a bunch of charts, just go with auto. Maybe it makes more sense. Set up again, dev. So let me make sure that everything is working properly. It is cool. Okay, um, let's just do quickly. Instead of feeding the the player one and player two data from from hard coding it inside the code, let's just do the same thing that we did on the last stream. That was taking a CMS collection, okay, and feeding that data from the CMS collection. So we'll say. I'll get rid of this. Let's say scores. And this is gonna be, yeah, name, I don't care. Um, this is gonna be option. It can be, it's gonna be player. So it's either player one or player two. And we'll have a, number that's going to be score like this and i think that's it so essentially let's just create 20 items for example yeah yeah okay random names we don't care but what we care is that uh, we have a bunch of scores that it's random values and we have from player one and player two. Yeah, Waffle's random names are pretty weird, but still enough, we're gonna use it. We have a cool trick that we can do and it's just uh, setting a collection list on the page. By the way, this collection list could be on this same page or and one thing that I prefer to do is instead of having the collection list on the same page, I put it in a, in a separate page, okay? and I use JavaScript to fetch that page, collect the data, and bring it back. So, because then we're not loading all these uh, embeds on the page, which is essentially, we could impact a little bit the performance on the page. But for now, let's just do it. Let's just do it here. So we'll bind to the scores, we'll define, let's do it like that. You wanna do it like that? Okay. Let's do it like that. Let's put scores. Come on, scores. 
not soccer's, but scores. So this is a another page that's called scores. Okay, and in this page, I'll just take this collection that I just created, this collection, and I'll put it in here. Cool, and let me just, did I delete it from here? No, like this, okay. So we have the scores, and inside here, we'll just put for each one of the items, so let me just show you, we have the collection list, inside of each item we're putting an embed and inside the embed we'll add a script that it's a type application json like this and inside the script we can put json data so we'll just open curly braces and close curly braces i will need first of all the player and we'll need also the score like this, okay? And we can use the fields, the dynamic fields inside the embed for feeding that data. So it's gonna be the player and it's gonna be the score like this. So now we have a long list with a bunch of, of uh, JSON data, but it's located in another page, right? Because our page, it's the chart.js page. So we have to write a little bit of code for fetching that data. Let's say fetch scores. It's gonna be an async function. Okay, and first of all, what we want to do is fetch the page that contains the scores, right? Because all the scores are JSON data that are on that page. So we'll just say our response. Uh, I'm gonna wait and it will fetch the scores page. Okay, remember that I've I've called this scores with a slug of scores, like this. So I can just make a relative fetch saying scores, that's it, okay? But the response, it's going to return the HTML of that page. So we want to convert that into a text, first of all. So let's say uh, HTML, and there's gonna be a response dot JSON, not JSON, sorry, text in like this. Okay, but now if we console log this, if we console log this, you will see how, let me call it here, fetch scores. You will see how we're receiving, ah, come on, I need to wait, I wait like that. Look what we're receiving. We're receiving basically just the HTML of the page, right? That contains all the scores. That's correct. But we, we cannot use this still. We need we need to extract um, the scores of each thing, okay? And for that, what we can do is something that's called DOM parser. So if we call parser, and this is gonna be a new DOM parser instance. And this parser allows us to parse something from a string. Okay, so in this case, it's the HTML, and we will say that it's text HTML. Okay, and now this is returning the page. So see how this page is a document now. Um, if we console log this again, page, and we check it again, now what we're receiving, it's a document that contains everything and now this start it's starting to look more with um to something that we can use right because it's just now a regular dumb document so the only thing that it's missing now it's just fetching the data so querying the data sorry so i can just say scripts cool uh scripts so we'll say page query selector all and in my case, uh, I, there are just scripts, so I don't care about any other selectors. I'll just say that find me all the scripts in of this, right? And now I'll say uh, scores. We'll take all the scripts and we'll map them. And of each script, we'll just return JSON parse uh, script text content. 
So what I'm, or, yeah, I know that there's. So essentially what I'm saying here is, hey, take each script, take the text of each script and just um, convert that text into an actual uh, JavaScript variable or something. It could be an object, it could be whatever. And that's why I'm using JSON parse here. And if we return the scores, by just picking them here, I would need to put this async. And now I'll just scores await fetch scores. So let's just console log this. Console log scores. <clears throat> and oh right. Wait a second. Jason bars. Oh right. Okay. Because we're not only parsing the scripts, um, the these scripts, we're also parsing the scripts, <laughs> the scripts from from Webflow, right? So I just want to pick the scripts that are application JSON. So I'll just say scripts, but that are application JSON, like this. Now, now we're talking. Okay, so now console log. Player one, score, player one, score, player two, score. We're basically, we've basically fetched all this data from another page, okay? So let me just finish this up. We have the scores and I wanna pass the scores, right? So I'll just say, scores, map, and this is the player. And in here, We'll say scores map. What do I wanna what do I want to do? I want to put show a label for its player. And let's see what happens. Player score. Just give me one second. Yeah, in this case I'm not showing it correctly because I have a bunch of player and scores. So I want, I want to have two data sets. Um, this course, it's an array of player and score. That's a number. Yeah, I can, do, I can do this. So now we can say the labels are gonna be the, What are going to be the labels? Because we want to show the line, and we we want to have two players, two players. Oh right, it's missing it's missing the games also, right? Because in each score you have to define like what game was this? Was game was it game one? Because was it game two? Was it game three? Etc. But for now, let me just say okay, player one scores. So it's going to be scores, filter, and where the player, it's player one. I think it's like that. And player two scores, it's the same, but player two. Let me console log this one second. Player one scores and player two scores. Cool. Okay, so now we have a score for player one like this and scores for player two. So now what I have to do is, which one is the longest? This one, so I'll just take, I know that this can be done better, but <laughs> we'll take this and we'll just mention the index of it. So, or index, because now what I'm saying is, yeah, for each each score, just count like a game, right? And I want to pass player one, so it's gonna be scores, and I want to pass player two, like this. Cool, okay, so see, now we're basically showing in this two line graph, the scores of each player in each game. So we have the first game, player one, got 95,000 and 
player two got 78,000 uh, and just going on like that. And obviously we don't have the same scores because I just did it randomly, right? But yeah, I think it's it's interesting to see how um, we're able to see this. We can even filter it out like this. Uh, yeah, interactive, cool. We're done. Thank you for sticking out here with us. Um, we've seen a lot of the different options, a lot of cool things that you can do with Charge.js. Feel free to just keep playing around with it. If you want to check the code base or the Waffle project, you can just check it in the description of the video. And we'll see you in the next stream. Please leave a like. See you. Bye.